Good evening, this is Wednesday, September 7th, 2011. This is Han Solo Solo 1, bringing you my first YouTube video. This is my idea for a dry tube cell. Uh, I've seen plenty of cells on the internet, and I don't too much like the idea of low pressure cells. I'm trying to get into the high pressure cell to try to run a vehicle um, similar to some others that have been on the internet but never verified. This is just one single cell. I plan to build 12, two banks of six and that way that there's only two volts per cell with six if you run it with the alternator and the car's running, it'll run more like 2.45 volts. Very, very complicated compared to what I originally thought up. It takes a lot of elbow grease to build these. Um, that will be the top half. This will be the bottom half. They're just dry fitted. They are not welded yet. It'll be a while before I get all the tubes dry fitted, ready to be welded. The basic principle is you have a top top cap and a bottom cap. This would be the top cap. The slots lasered in it. Holes for mounting to the flange on the top. And a hole for the barb fitting water port. The same on the base. The base will just be welded right to the bottom two inch casing but this will have several tubes in it three tubes on the top three tubes on the bottom plus a fourth on the casing giving you four tubes on the bottom half of this cell three tubes on the top top being positively charged fitting together quite nicely I'm hoping that once I have these welded together that I will not have to use nylon or any other type of wire tie to keep the <coughs> tubes apart so that they are able to vibrate freely without being restricted by being locked down with wire ties. The ends of these tubes are cut out so that the water coming in and going out cross flows from one side to the other. It'll come in from the bottom on this side, exit from the top on this side. And that gives you a nice gap for your water to come out of the tubes. But still being connected to the top plate. Giving all these tubes a positive charge uniformly. And the same on the bottom. Once this is welded together, all the tubes negatively charged. The rubber gasket and these plastic nylon plastic insulators will keep the two will be the only thing keeping the two halves of the cells, the positive and negative, from touching. So no bolts going into PVC that's going to melt, and no problems with that. And I shouldn't have any problem with overheating. As I said, I don't plan to put more than 2.45 volts per cell. Six in a series, two sets of ser two, two uh, different banks rather of these cells and we'll see how high we can get the amps but it'll be two or three weeks before I get these uh, ready and welded. I have a primary bubbler slash reservoir to hold uh, two gallons of electrolyte. Uh, this cell should, uh, this setup should run with one gallon of electrolyte left, electrolyte water. Uh, we'll have to see about the uh, problem with uh, thermal runaway. I doubt running that running 2.5 volts uh, approximately is going to cause thermal runaway, but we will have to uh, have to see. Thank you very much. Have a good day.